is Artastic and in this video art tutorial we're going to be using our choice of art making mediums to create a zombie banana that explores the principle of design contrast. So grab your choice of art making mediums, a piece of paper and let's make some art. Okay, so we're going to begin our contrast zombie banana. So we're going to grab a choice mark making media and we're going to begin with the shape of the banana. So we're going to start off with the banana peel. Now I'm going to draw a nice little stem at the bottom here. So like a curving rectangle. You can add a little dark nub at the bottom. And then we're going to create the peel. So we're going to have one fold go up and down. We're going to bring it out in a curve up and down to a point. Kind of looks like a leaf. On the inside, we're going to actually we're going to do the other side. Let's do the other peel. All right, up and down. Up around and curve. Okay, we got two folds of a banana peel. Let's add a line up the center just like that for some banana peel texture. Oh yes. Okay, now let's draw a zombie banana. So we're gonna draw a nice banana shape but Make sure you go a little bit loosey-goosey with the hand because we want it to be looking like a zombie, which means it's a mushed up banana, starting to get some brown spots. So we gotta make sure that we give it some awful edges along there. And you can even add some curves in the back here for some peels that we can't see that are on the other side. Maybe this one's just coming down and peeking out in the back, whatever it is, no big deal. Okay, I'm also going to draw a nice little oval on the ground there just to indicate where the ground is for banana. And we're going to draw the zombie sort of face. So we're going to start off with two eyes, so one circle on each side of the banana. And to make it a zombie eye, we're going to go around the eyes and thicken them up, leaving just the inside nice and white. Just like that. I'm gonna give it a zombie mouth. So I'm gonna draw a nice big curving shape like that. Two curves at the bottom. And then bring it up in the middle. You can add a curving line in the center for the tongue and then go ahead and color in the dark of the mouth, leaving just that tongue nice and white for now. I'm also gonna add some expressive lines. So I'm gonna add some curving lines beneath each eye for some zombie tired expression. And now we're gonna add some zombiness to our banana here. I'm gonna add some wrinkles for where the banana is not doing too good. But also, I'm also gonna add some holes for where some worms are coming out. So I'll add some holes here on the side. I'm gonna bring it out into some wormy shapes like that. I think I need three worms. Maybe I'll have one more right here at the top. We can add some brown spots. So I'll color these brown, these kind of rectangle shapes where the banana has been bruised and has gone brown. Cause of course that would happen for a zombie banana. And maybe I'm gonna add a fly on the peel here. So I'm gonna add a nice little fly head with two fly wings and a little fly body. Just like that. And perhaps the banana's sort of decomposing, so little bits are sort of falling to the ground. So we'll have some of the peel just kind of disintegrating and landing 
on the ground as it starts to decompose just like that. All right, and once you're done, you're gonna go around of the outside of your banana only and just thicken up the lines, make them bold and beautiful. And then we're gonna get ready to color in our lovely zombie banana that explores the principle of design contrast. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this a high contrast artwork once we're done outlining it. It's going to be colored in with a dark background. So I'm gonna paint my background black, but you can use whatever art making mediums you want to give it a nice dark background. It could be dark blue, dark purple, uh, it could be black. You can use any art medium, wax crayon, pencil crayon, whatever you got, you use what you have. And you're gonna give it a nice dark background, but the banana is gonna be nice and bright. So contrast, helps, it's a principle of design, and it helps bring focus to the focal point of the artwork. In this case, it is the banana. And we wanna bring all the viewers' attention to this banana. So we're gonna do contrast. Again, that is opposites, so it could be big versus small, and this is the biggest thing on the page, but it's also dark versus light. So we're gonna do a very light banana. It's gonna be quite bright, and our background is gonna be nice and dark to make this pop. All right, here we go. So you can go ahead, I'm gonna start off with my banana peel, it's nice and orange. And I mean, <laughs> nice and yellow. My goodness. You can use whatever art making mediums you want to color in your banana peel as well. Use whatever art making mediums. And then we're going to color in the rest of the banana as well with some nice bright colors including the bug. I'm gonna make my bug nice and purple and bright. I want everything to be super bright so that way it all stands out. That is the goal, my lovely friend. And then once we're done that, we're going to make our background again nice and dark to make contrast because contrast, again, helps bring the viewer's attention to the focal point, which in this case is zombie banana, a decomposing fruit. Like that, lovely. Now, there's a lot of yellow going on, so I'm gonna layer some mediums. I'm gonna grab that orange. I'm just gonna go along the edge here and add some shading, not with black, but with orange. A nice, again, bright color. Okay, and then I'm gonna get a nice brown, and I'm gonna add some variety with brown. So I'm gonna add some overlapping shadows here with my brown, the peels in the background, further away here. And then I'm going to add my brown to my bruised parts of banana. I'm gonna go over these lines with brown. I'm also gonna go around the eyes and shade with brown like that. Forgot about my decomposing bits, so I'm gonna add some yellow first, and then I'll add, you guessed it, brown. Add some brown there, like that. While the peel is all starting to turn into dirt here. Lovely, what else do I need? Worms! They're colorless. I don't have a particularly nice worm color, so I'm gonna grab a wax. Crayon here, because I got much more variety in my crayons. There we go. I'm just gonna get my nice light color here. Nice wormy color. I think I'm gonna have to layer them to get a perfect worm color. Okay. Now I have kind of a stressed out zombie, so I had some little teardrops coming off here. Like that. And, oh yeah, that tongue needs some detail. So I'm gonna color that nice and red, and yes. Check it out. A very zombie banana. Okay, so zombie banana, super bright, super high contrast, but now, of course, we need 
to add some dark vibes in the background to help make this pop again. It's contrast. So we're gonna, I'm gonna grab my watercolor paints, but you grab whatever dark art medium you want to use. Again, I'm gonna choose to do black and I'm gonna leave that white ground area white again to help make that bright focal point. And I'm just gonna take my black paint and now I'm gonna carefully paint around my bits and banana because they will not resist the paint. So if I put paint on them, it's not coming off. So I'm gonna be a nice, careful artist. Paint around all those details, just like that. And I'm not gonna go right to the edge. I'm just gonna go and paint in and create my artwork just around banana. Okay. Once you're done painting your lovely banana, all those fabulous dark colors, you can see how the principle of design contrast really helps bring attention to banana, which is so bright amongst that dark, dreary world. And once you're done painting and coloring in your lovely zombie banana, again, using the principle of design contrast, your lovely artwork is done. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Please make sure that you hit that like button and subscribe to this channel so I can continue to make amazing art lessons for you. Oh yeah. Well, if you are an art educator or a teacher and you're looking for some cool art lessons for your classroom, no matter what kind of teacher you are, for any grade, check out the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers store. There I have over 700 art lessons and of course it's always growing and transforming. So make sure you check it out frequently. But it's the Ms. Artastic Teachers Pay Teachers store and you're gonna find art lessons that are fully planned and easy to use. And you're gonna find some cool art activities to use for all the seasons all the holidays, and so much more. You're gonna find amazing art lessons that are integrating the seasons, the holidays, elements of art, principles of design, and art history, and so much more, my friends. It's a fabulous resource, so check it out. If you're looking for some awesome art ideas for your classroom, you can head on over to teacherspayteachers.com. In that search bar, just click it, and you can type in Ms. Artastic, same as this YouTube channel. There I am, you can click that, and that's gonna bring you to this page. And you can navigate it a variety of ways. You can go down, scroll, and see what's new. Um, these are usually my featured products that are usually brand new. Or if you go down to the side here, you're gonna find the categories of different things. You can click Artivity Books to find my art um, activity books that are fully integrated with the elements and principles. You can find artists and art history, art sub resources, back to school, Christmas, distance learning, and so much more principles of design. Here it's all organized for different themes or the holidays and seasons or types of learning, including sketchbooks and social emotional learning and all of the above. So make sure you check it out, Ms. Artastic on Teachers Pay Teachers, and thank you so much for watching. I'm Ms. Artastic, signing off.